What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. I think that this is a very, very, very important conversation to have right now um, because it highlights and it showcases why it's important for us men in general and welcome ladies also, but why it's important for us men to continue to have this conversation because every time I post something or every time I see something on Instagram or every time that I go viral, I see in the comments people saying, oh man, we still having this conversation. I'll leave it in 2023. Well, I'm going to show you why it's important for men to continue to have a voice because what I think is people are trying to silence us. People are trying to remove men from the conversation so that they can get the simps and the pandering so that they can feel good instead of getting a, the real medicine that's inside of the candy. And it's no longer important for you to do the thing that's in your best interest. The only thing that matters is your emotions. But take this, for example, Trevor Bauer here is a former MLB Major League Baseball pitcher, was great at his job. And all it took was a couple accusations and me too's in order for him to lose that bag. And then he proved that this woman right here, which her name, I believe it was Lindsay Hill, actually set him up to finesse him. Let me show you what he's talking about. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. A text Lindsay Hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me. What should I steal? She asked another in reference to visiting my house for the first time. The answer, take his money. So how might that work? I'm going to his house Wednesday, she said. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll. Then after the first time we met, net worth is 51 mil, she said. Bitch, you better secure the bag, was the response. Uh, but, but how was she gonna do that? Need daddy to choke me out, she said, being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million, read another text. Then after the second time we met, former Padres pitcher Jacob Nix told her, you gotta get this bag. I'll give you 50,000, Lindsay replied. Her AA sponsor asked her at one point, do you feel a tiny bit guilty? Not really, she replied. Since then, her legal team has approached me multiple times about coming to a financial settlement. But as I have done since day one, I refuse to pay her even a single cent. Uh, in August of 2021, Lindsay Hill's claims were heard in court, and during those legal proceedings, critical information was deliberately and unlawfully concealed from me and my legal team. Uh, information like this video, which was taken by Lindsay Hill herself the morning after she claimed she was brutally attacked, emotionally traumatized, and desperate to get away from me. Uh, and now we have the metadata, so there can be no dispute. Uh, it was taken mere minutes before she left my house on the morning of May 16th, 2021 without my knowledge or consent, of course. Uh, in it, you can see her lying in bed next to me while I'm sleeping, smirking at the camera without a care in the world, or any marks on her face. I think it paints a pretty clear picture of what actually happened the evening of May 15th and why the video was originally concealed from us. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, after hearing the evidence available to her, Judge Diana Gold Saltman found that Lindsay Hill had misled the court. She found her claims to be materially misleading. Uh, she denied her request for a domestic violence restraining order, and she found that no sexual assault or non-consensual conduct took place. Now, some of you might not know about restraining order hearings. I know I didn't, but uh, I've since learned that uh, it's extremely rare for a request for a restraining order to be denied because the standard of proof that you need to obtain one is extremely low. So you can make of that what you will. The fact is, I was never arrested, I was never charged with a crime, and I won the only legal proceeding that took place without my side of the story even being heard. Uh, and most importantly, as I've said from day one, I never sexually assaulted Lindsay Hill, or anyone else for that matter. Uh, so I sued her, which prompted her to countersue me. Quite frankly, regardless of the outcome in court, I've paid significantly more in legal fees than Lindsay Hill could ever pay me in her entire life. Uh, and I knew that would be the case going in, but the lawsuit was never about the money for me. It was the only way for me to obtain critical information to clear my name. Uh, the discovery process in that lawsuit recently concluded, at which point uh, Lindsay Hill's legal team again came to us with another proposal to resolve the case. Uh, this time, however, they weren't seeking any money from me. Having received uh, much of the information that had been hidden from us, uh, a small portion of which I've referenced here, um, I was willing to agree to the terms proposed both parties would drop their respective lawsuits and neither of us would pay either side any money. Um, I also retained my right to speak publicly about the case, something I have not been at liberty to do since June of 2021. So as of today, both lawsuits have been settled. Now, over the last two years, I've been forced to defend my integrity 
uh, and my reputation in a very public setting. But hopefully this is the last time I have to do so, as I'd prefer to just remain focused on doing my job, uh, winning baseball games and entertaining fans around the world. So. And he's already lost a significant amount of money because your reputation, especially in Major League Baseball, is just as important as you being able to perform out on a field. Now, one thing that we know that people are going to say is, well, you know, he should have had dick discipline and so on and so forth. First of all, we're not going to victim shame. We're not going to try to hold him accountable for something that he did not do wrong. Yes, it's important for us to protect ourselves only because we know that women are looking to finesse these men, but that's not the end of the conversation, right? She also did an interview shortly after this in which she explained her perspective or her side of the story about how it is that she tried to finesse him. Take a look. You say this wasn't a setup. How can you expect anyone to believe that? That's a great question. I really appreciate you having me on to even have this conversation. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on around this, so I really appreciate uh, people who are asking questions about it. Um, the first thing I want to say is, you know, I think that Trevor did this intentionally with the text messages and how he framed this video. Um, there's several things in it that are not correct. Um, and I just want to start out by saying, you know, those it's so valid for people to question those text messages. But the root of the problem here is that he is presenting this as one conversation when in reality he had thousands of message messages to choose from took those made it look sequential which it was not um there is no combined screenshot of those things going on one after the other and look at the host the host is ice grilling this chick and i'm not sure if she realized that she's just completely out of her league and not situationally aware that she's being on invited onto this show in order to make herself look like a fool but she's doing a phenomenal job but as long as you keep them talking, they'll tell you exactly what it is that's going on. And as I said last night as well, um, there's no text message that ever exists. Otherwise, he would have, you know, put it out there uh, combining, you know, anything about a setup uh, through rough sex finances all in one. Those were handpicked and they were not. They were from multiple different conversations all before we met up. Um, and I, I think that the Look video the in general doesn't even talk about what actually happened between I us two, which is what would have come out during a, a jury trial. Um, you know, these were all messages that happened before. And then, of course, the video is so valid as well for people to ask questions about. Um, but I do think that that video was entirely misleading. He also references the uh, restraining order hearing, which people also have questions about. Um, he says that he was cleared of any wrongdoing, which is actually incorrect. Um, in our civil case, the judge had actually ruled that he had not been cleared of any wrongdoing. Um, and that was a federal court judge. So, um, so OK, so I, I want to get to the to the domestic violence uh, restraining order hearing as well. But I mean, so you're saying you're saying that it's misleading because you did you're admitting that you did talk about rough sex and wanting rough sex. You did talk about uh, he, him needing to choke you out. You did talk about stealing his money, but it's misleading because he put them together in the same video as if you had said it in the same conversation when in fact it was separate conversations. Correct. That's, that's what why it's misleading. Correct. And as well as not showing, you know, the messages that occurred after where it discusses it strictly in the term of, you know, being a baseball wife or something like that. So she admits to looking to finesse him. And that's OK. It's so OK that they feel comfortable talking about it out loud and they don't even have to hide it anymore. Why? Because we've all agreed that we have to say, hey, listen, believe all women, rock out with them, roll out with them. Let's get to it. It's okay if they finesse you. We're going to hold men accountable no matter what, but it's very, very difficult for us to hold women accountable. But that's not the end of the conversation. Let me also pivot over into this next video really quickly because I want to paint the full picture. I don't want y'all to think that it only exists amongst white women or others. Exhibit B. This woman right here a black woman was a part of this whole Me Too movement and that she seen what Lindsay Hill had did and she said, I'm a one up you. See, the finesse doesn't just come with white women. It doesn't just come with black women. It comes all across the board and that's why they call it a gender war, not necessarily a white gender war or a black gender war. 
men of all races, creeds, religious, backgrounds, mother, father, military, don't matter what kind of situation that you're in, Trevor Bauer just so happened to be one of the few men that could defend himself and had the resources to do so, but we still not taking into consideration how much money he lost just based off of the court of public opinion when he first got accused. I'll let him explain it to you. One of the women who accused me of sexual assault just got indicted for committing felony fraud against me. Imagine that. Uh, let me catch up to speed. In the last three years, two women have taken legal action against me. Uh, Lindsay Hill started all this. You may remember her from this video as the girl who set me up and lied to the world in an attempt to take my money. Well, today, the only other one, Darcy Adana Asimono, has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man. So now she's facing up to 16 years in prison. Her claims are even more absurd than Lindsay's were, so here's some of the details. We had one plain sexual encounter in December of 2020, nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it, take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning, explaining why she came on to me. And for months afterwards, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. Uh, for example, this text from January 7th, 2021. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. Now, it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years. Uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together, and only after Lindsay Hill made up her false allegations, Adana retained a lawyer. Uh, she then demanded $3.6 million and claimed I forced her to have an abortion, leaving her- $3.6 million. That's extortion. That's fraud. That's actually trying to finesse. That's the thing that we see from a lot of women down there in Atlanta. Let me just say that number again. She requested $3.6 million in a Me Too, a Me Too type of environment in which she's seen one white girl and she said, same way that we joined feminism, I'm gonna go ahead and join this fraud case. Let's continue. Emotionally devastated and irretrievably damaged by it. But uh, here's the thing, she never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant. And that's corroborated by her own medical records. When I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In that version of her story, she claimed, for the first time by the way, uh, that there was non-consensual sex, but her texts from the next morning show what actually happened. Remember this text in which she explains why she came on to me? Uh, she also claims that instead of an abortion, she actually had a miscarriage, but that's impossible of course because again, she was never even pregnant. Uh, we now have emails between her and the first two law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any evidence to support her claims, but they'll try to get my money anyway. I then shared an audio recording I have in which Adana contradicts her own claims and asks me for money. In the emails, her lawyers agreed that that's insurmountable evidence and they inform Adana that they can no longer represent her unless she can provide documentation or proof of her claims. Yeah, of course, she couldn't do that, so the law firm urged her to consult other law firms with different standards. But we'll come back to this video because I want to finish playing this video, but I started to have a sneaking suspicion that I had seen this woman before. No, not in person. I'm not really sure if I've seen her on social media. Ah, I remembered. And then I did a review video because I don't really watch these shows, but this show had just started popping off so much. And you know, the interesting thing about it is that on this show where everything started popping off, it was another woman that we was paying attention to, and that's the one all the way on the right with the zebra hookup on. And it was like, oh, that girl is so nasty, whatever. But I wasn't paying attention to her. I was paying attention to the one that was being extra sassy, extra nasty, and then acted like she was better than everybody else, like she had been running it up and she was so high value, when in reality, she had been finessing men, and we gonna get to that part, because it wasn't just Trevor Bauer, according to what he said on his video, Apparently she had been finessing men and that's how she got her come up. Let me give you an example of how she talks to men and how she views men that she feel unworthy to be in her presence. Why did you end up popping your balloon for him? He seems uh, like volatile, dangerous. Like if, if I were to say like I'm not interested or something, he might accost me. Mm. What do you mean? Accost me, like belittle me or put me down if I, no. like it seems like you're not good with like, a negative comment. Me? So, you. Mm -hmm. No, not at all, sweetheart. Okay, well, see, that's that yeah, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just observed and I noticed that, but that's, that's all. And she did this all show. 
And it was worse in other instances. And I don't want to go through the whole thing. But I just want to tell you that clout chasing is real. And they feel no shame. And their goal is to continue to promote themselves. And it was guys, regardless of the fact that he, they, he continued to put these guys down on a regular basis, but they still simped out for it. You know how they simped out? Is that they wouldn't hold her accountable. And I could tell and I could see, and I never even understood why these guys went on here to put themselves up to get the balloons pop. And it was so much giggling. That was the part that made it so cringeworthy is that it was so much giggling by the women on this panel that was a part of the sister club. And they were supporting this bad behavior. And we see it happen on a regular basis. And nobody continued to hold her accountable. And they all thought that it was funny. And it made for a great viral moment, but it wasn't necessarily painting the whole picture of who this person is. And this is why we have elephant memories. This is why we like to go back to the receipts. So let me go back to the video that he had, that he was describing who she was so that he can paint the full picture of who you was really dealing with. Now, Adana has filed more than 10 police reports claiming sexual assault or harassment against other men, including at least one other professional athlete. But after the Scottsdale police completed their investigation into her claim against me, she's the one being indicted for felony fraud. And not just against me, against another man as well. Now, she made up bogus sexual assault claims and attempted to extort him too. And it gets worse. In my lawsuit against her, we subpoenaed a witness whom she knew for relevant documents to use in our case. And when she found out, she immediately made sexual assault claims against him too. Mm. Uh, her MO is clear. Lie to men to get their money, extort them if she must, and when they refuse to pay, stop paying or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of sexual assault, and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. And just so no one can say, well, he still has two other accusers, just because the first two are complete frauds doesn't mean the others are. Here's a couple of facts about them. They both had lawyers first demand in excess of $3 million to not go public. Uh, in both cases, only after I refused to pay any sum of money did the lawyers make anonymous claims in the media. They both had the opportunity to file a criminal complaint against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to file a civil suit against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to participate in Lindsay Hill's civil suit against me. They could have even done so anonymously. They both refused. One of them even submitted a statement to the court stating that she never made public accusations against me. The other refused to participate so vehemently that Lindsay Hill took legal action against her trying to force her to participate. She still refused. So they both had the opportunity to testify under penalty of perjury. Neither of them did. One can only wonder why. Uh, perhaps it's because all of their claims against me are lies. Now, it's been two years since these women and their lawyers attempted to weaponize anonymous claims in the media against me to take my money. I addressed them at the time, and as far as I'm concerned, it's in the past. But if there comes a time in the future where I need to defend myself further, I will not hesitate to do so. Uh, for now, there's no reason to speak further on this topic, though, because outside of Adana, who's now been indicted with felony fraud, there are no claims against me, no ongoing investigations, and no outstanding lawsuits. At this point, I'm not sure what else I can possibly do to prove my innocence in all of this. I did not do what I was accused of. And every institution that our society is entrusted to rule on issues like these, like courts, judges, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, they all agree with me. They've rejected every single claim made against me, even going as far as charging one of my accusers with a felony. If any evidence of any of these claims actually existed, I would have been charged, or at the very least arrested. But that never happened. What else do I have to do to prove that this entire situation has been a massive lie? This is There's nothing that you can do, sir. And that's the unfortunate part about it. The whole point of this conversation that we have having right now is the fact that you are, you are guilty in the court of public opinion before you ever had the opportunity to defend yourself because we live in a society where we say believe all women. And women can continue to promote themselves on a balloon show because clout chasing is a hell of a drug and they need to throw the book at that woman. She needs to be arrested, thrown under the jail and do every single day without any good behavior in order to be made an example of. Every day we make an example of men that do things that are egregious and we hold them accountable to the fullest extent of the law. And we need to start doing the same thing with these women, not because we hate women but because it's important for us to make an example because there's too many men that's being released as a result of the innocence project of things that they didn't do and how many people actually had to lose their resources, lose their families, lose their jobs and lose their freedom because of a false claim or a false report or because somebody was just trying to come up and finesse them. It's unfortunate. I don't support it. I don't believe in it. And as long as we have women continuing to do the things that's the worst thing for us, 
I will be right here having a conversation with you guys, talking about how we need to hold them accountable in the same way that men are held accountable. You know why? Because you advocated for equal. And so equal rights, equal, equal lefts. That's where I stand on it. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also, we live streaming tonight on this channel. Hopefully you find value in the things that we have in a conversation about. Also, Millionaire Morning Show is in the morning. And then we got after hours. Make sure you subscribe to every platform. Hit the notification bell so you know when I go live and when I drop a video. And then add value into the conversation by commenting below. Again, make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description so you can rock out with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're going in. And I promise you, it's no type of women like these that's trying to finesse you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.